In this video, we're going to check out spironolactone and how spironolactone can help improve hair growth. This one was completely new to me. I've never heard of spironolactone, but we're going to use a 12 month study, 12 month study that used spironolactone with females suffering with hair loss. So we're going to check that out along with a bunch of other stuff. So stay tuned. Hey guys, Leon here and welcome to the Hair Guard YouTube channel. On this channel, we create tons of science-backed YouTube videos just like this one, all about how you can combat hair loss and regrow healthy hair. If you are new here, consider subscribing. So into the video on spironolactone. In this video, you're gonna learn whether you can and should use spironolactone for hair loss. You're gonna learn about the most recent research and the 12 month study that looked at spironolactone for female hair growth. I'm gonna discuss the pros and cons, the side effects, how and why it works. And you'll also learn about how long results take and what is the best way to use spironolactone today. First things first guys, what is spironolactone? Well spironolactone, also known by its brand name Aldactone, is a medication that has been used for almost 60 years and has a number of research backed uses. Like a variety of other prescription medications that have been produced with one particular use in mind, Spironolactone has also been found to have a few interesting off-brand applications as well. One such application is the reduction of DHT found in the body and more specifically the scalp. So what conditions is spironolactone actually used to treat? Well first is acne. For women who suffer from treatment resistant acne, spironolactone has been found to be an effective treatment. Short and long term use has been deemed safe though additional research would be beneficial for women looking to use spironolactone as a long-term acne treatment. Also, it's used to treat excessive hair growth. Hirsutism, also known as excessive hair growth, is a common symptom in women who suffer from polycystic ovarian syndrome, or PCOS. This condition is caused by an excess amount of androgens, such as DHT, in the body, and spironolactone has been proven to effectively reduce the level of androgen present and reverse hirsutism. Also heart failure. A study was performed on 1,663 patients suffering from heart failure. 822 of these patients received a daily dose, which was 25 milligrams, of spironolactone while 841 patients received a placebo. At the end of the study, the patients who received the spironolactone had a 35% less frequency of required hospitalization and also had a 30% decrease in risk of death. Also, high blood pressure. In patients with uncontrolled hypertension, spironolactone was shown to be an effective treatment. And pattern boldness. DHT, the androgen hormone which is also responsible for excessive hair growth in women, as mentioned above, is also responsible for pattern boldness which can occur in both men and women. Spironolactone has been shown to reduce the levels of DHT in the body and has been found to be an effective treatment for those suffering from hair loss. So can spironolactone be effective at treating hair loss? As mentioned, spironolactone was found to reduce the amount of DHT in the body. Well, this is great news for hair loss sufferers. What is DHT and how is the reduction of DHT useful for hair growth? Well, we've discussed the effects of DHT on male pattern baldness many times. DHT is a chemical that's produced when testosterone, the male sex hormone, comes into contact with an enzyme known as 5-alpha reductase. When someone suffers from androgenetic alopecia, also referred to as male pattern baldness, the production of DHT leads to the miniaturization of hair follicles in DHT sensitive regions of the scalp. To understand this, it's first important to understand how hair grows. There are three phases associated with hair growth, anagen, catagen, and telogen. Anagen is the phase of active hair growth, and this phase has, been, has a length of anywhere between two to six years. Catagen is next, and is also known as a transition between active growth and rest. Lastly is telogen. This is the phase in which the follicle is at rest, and is most commonly associated with the shedding of hair. What happens during the above three phases, however, when the hair follicle has been miniaturized by DHT? As the follicle is miniaturized, the growing phase shortens. This means that, over time, shorter and shorter hairs will be produced. At the same time, the telogen phase lengthens. 
Eventually, the hairs become so short that they will no longer peek through the follicle, and the follicle stays in a perpetual state of rest. It's obvious, then, that for those individuals suffering from male pattern baldness, and the reduction of DHT is vital in order to prevent further hair loss and stimulate hair growth. So what does the research have to say about spironolactone when it comes to hair loss? While the majority of research surrounding the use of spironolactone in the treatment of androgenetic alopecia has been performed on women, the results can still be used to show the effectiveness of such a treatment. One such study was performed on a 53-year-old woman with clinical evidence of female pattern baldness which is similarly linked to DHT, just as in men. The subject was initially treated with a 200mg oral dose of spironolactone daily, and she had documented hair regrowth at the 12-month mark, though hair growth did eventually plateau by the 24-month mark. It was at this point in the study that a twice-daily dose of minoxidil 5% solution was prescribed, and further hair growth was documented. So what does this mean for sufferers of androgenetic alopecia, and more specifically, male sufferers? 1. This study shows that spironolactone supplementation is effective in not only stopping hair loss, but also effective at hair regrowth. 2. Combination treatment can be an effective treatment for those with male pattern baldness, and in this case it was spironolactone with minoxidil. Are there any side effects to taking spironolactone? You may be wondering if androgenetic alopecia is more common in men, uh, and why are the majority of studies on androgenetic alopecia and spironolactone performed on women? Well, there's a very good reason for this, and that's oral supplementation of spironolactone in men has been connected to feminization. According to a 2004 study entitled Gynecomastia and Hyper Antihypertensive Therapy, oral supplementation of spironolactone has a number of unpleasant side effects. These effects include uh, gynecomastasia, which is basically growth of the male breasts, impotence, and decreased libido. The incidence and severity of these effects is dependent on the given dosage, though even a low oral dosage of 25 mg a day had a 10% incidence of gyno and or breast pain in men. Does this mean that men cannot use spironolactone to treat hair loss? Absolutely not. While oral supplementation has been linked to gyno and other feminization effects, topical supplementation was found to be highly effective in the treatment of alopecia and the side effects were minimal or even non-existent. So how can you start using it for hair growth? While oral supplementation may be a viable option for women suffering from androgenetic alopecia, the best course for men is topical supplementation of spironolactone. When applied topically to the scalp, spironolactone appears to have only a localized effect. This is a great treatment option for men who would like to try spironolactone, but are wary of the more common oral side effects. Now, obtaining it is the easiest way to obtain a topical for use in male pattern baldness is as a prescription from a dermatologist or other medical professional. Unfortunately, spironolactone is not available over the counter, so the help of a doctor in obtaining the treatment is required. How do we apply spironolactone to the scalp? Well, there's no right or wrong way to apply spironolactone topically. Some individuals who are using it to treat male pattern baldness apply it only to problem areas, while other individuals will apply to the entirety of the scalp. Application is simple. Begin with a pea-sized amount of spironolactone on your fingertips, rub your fingertips together, and then massage the cream into your scalp in a gentle circular motion. Repeat the above steps uh, until the areas you'd like to target have been massaged and the spironolactone has been applied. While clinical studies have applied the spironolactone on a daily basis, you may also find that every few days or even once per week is sufficient for your needs. There's no doubt that supplementation of spironolactone has an effect on the androgen levels in the body, both male and female. For treatment in male pattern baldness, however, topical solution supplementation is the best course of action and should be discussed with your doctor. So, pretty interesting, spironolactone could be effective. Don't forget that it's always going to take a multi-pronged approach where you're looking at things like taking various supplements, topical solutions, microneedling, scalp massage, alkalizing the diet. It's always going to take a multi-pronged approach, but this was quite interesting on spironolactone. Don't forget, if you are new here, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.